We've known for, for many, many years that for some people, injuring the brain can increase the risk of, of dementia. A uh, particular group of patients or a group of people that we've known this for have been boxers. We've known that for nearly 100 years. The exposure to head injury in boxing can uh, increase the risk of a particular form of dementia. We used to call dementia pugilistica. But in the last decade, what we've realised is it's not just boxers and boxing exposure that's the problem, but actually it's head injury from virtually any exposure. And in a sporting context, we're recognising it now in American footballers, in hockey players, in rugby uh, footballers, and also in association football or soccer players. But, but it's not just sport. Head injury in any context also increases the risk of dementia. But in those cases, instead of it being repetitive mild head injury, it's single, moderate or severe head injury. It's the kind of thing you get from a car accident or an assault. I think that's the challenge, is to understand the, the, the mechanism driving this degenerative brain disease. We know it's distinctive in pathology. Um, so my specialty is pathology. And we know from looking at cases of people exposed to single moderate or severe injury or repetitive mild injury, that the, the pathology is quite distinctive. We can now begin to tell apart from typical dementias like Alzheimer's disease and frontotemporal and Lewy body. But what's driving it, that's the challenge. But this is where I think head injury associated with dementia becomes really important because unlike other dementias where we really don't recognise the patients until they have the dementia, in this population what we can do is look at a high risk group. So we can look at former athletes or we can look at people who've been assaulted or been in a road traffic accident and we can follow those people through and see what happens and begin to understand how the pathology develops. And I think in that way, head injury could be really informative for wider dementia. What we're now recognising increasingly is that there are risks from exposure to repetitive head injury and head impacts. Um, but we think they can be managed quite well by minimising exposure. Now that's not stop playing sport, but if necessary, modify the sport to reduce the risk. So let's say American football has been very successful in changing the rules in football to reduce the risk of concussion. I think rugby could do something similar. Um, but head injuries are always going to happen. They happen everywhere. Uh, so what we need to do then is, is better manage the head injuries, so recognise them, be aware of them and better manage them so that people aren't put at risk. So that way we get the benefit of participation in sport and all the health benefits you get from that, but we're reducing the risk of dementia. Although this has been around for nearly 100 years, it's really only the past decade that people have paid any attention to it in any meaningful sense and really only the past four or five years that people have really started to aggressively try and understand this head injury associated dementia because it has such a wide societal impact. Um, so first of all we need to understand what are the risks, you know, what, 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 what's what population risk. So if I play rugby, I used to play rugby, you know, what's the risk to me of having played rugby? And I think that's probably very low. In boxers, 15 to 20 percent of people who, play, who box are at risk of this kind of dementia. I think in, in other sports, the likelihood is it's going to be much smaller. So we need to identify what the risk is. Then we need to think about what's actually driving it. You're very right. What, what's the, what are the driving pathologies? Is there anything we can do to intervene at an early stage? How can we better recognise it clinically? What are the imaging tests? So there's a, there's a whole list of things that go on and on. Uh, and I think we've got many, many decades of research on this. Uh, rather than having something that we can wrap up in the next five or ten years.